After fighting the longest war in its history, the US stands at the brink of defeat in Afghanistan. How could this be possible? How could the world's sole superpower have battled continuously for more than 16 years deploying more than 100,000 troops at the conflict's peak, sacrificing the lives of nearly 2,300 soldiers, spending more than $1 TN, £740 billion, on its military operations, lavishing a record $100 billion more on nation-building? helping fund and train an army of 350,000 Afghan allies and still not be able to pacify one of the world's most impoverished nations. So dismal is the prospect of stability in Afghanistan that, in 2016, the Obama White House cancelled a planned withdrawal of its forces, ordering more than 8,000 troops to remain in the country indefinitely. In the American failure lies a paradox. Washington's massive military juggernaut has been stopped in its steel tracks by a small pink flower the opium poppy. Throughout its three decades in Afghanistan, Washington's military operations have succeeded only when they fit reasonably comfortably into Central Asia's illicit traffic in opium and suffered when they failed to complement it. It was during the Cold War that the US first intervened in Afghanistan backing Muslim militants who were fighting to expel the Soviet Red Army. In December 1979, the Soviets occupied Kabul in order to shore up their failing client regime, Washington, still wounded by the fall of Sigo four years earlier, decided to give Moscow its own Vietnam by backing the Islamic resistance. For the next ten years, the CIA would provide the Mujahideen guerrillas with an estimated $3 billion in arms. These funds, along with an expanding opium harvest, would sustain the Afghan resistance for the decade it would take to force a Soviet withdrawal. One reason the US strategy succeeded was that the surrogate war launched by the CIA did not disrupt the way its Afghan allies used the country's swelling drug traffic to sustain their decade-long struggle. Despite almost continuous combat since the invasion of October 2001, pacification efforts have failed to curtail the Taliban insurgency, largely because the US simply could not control the swelling surplus from the country's heroin trade. Its opium production surged from around 180 tons in 2001 to more than 3,000 tons a year after the invasion and to more than 8,000 by 2007. Every spring, the opium harvest fills the Taliban's coffers once again, funding wages for a new crop of guerrilla fighters. At each stage in its tragic, tumultuous history over the past 40 years the covert war of the 1980s, the civil war of the Aetis and its post-2001 occupation opium has played a central role in shaping the country's destiny. In one of history's bitter ironies, Afghanistan's unique ecology converged with American military technology to transform this remote, landlocked nation into the world's first true narco-state a country where illicit drugs dominate the economy define political choices and determine the fate of foreign interventions. During the 1980s, the CIA's secret war against the Soviet occupation of Afghanistan helped transform the Afghan-Pakistani borderlands into a launch pad for the global heroin trade.